Yo, what's happening guys? King GPL here, and welcome back to a brand new Ultra Premiere video. Today, we're showcasing a very fun team featuring Draco Meteor Gudra. This Pokemon was so much fun in Ultra Premiere, and I think this is something that you can carry over and use in normal Ultra League. This team is super fun, gained a lot of elo for me, I gained roughly about 130 elo with this team. Once again guys, I played some Great League, dropped down to 2470, and I think we finished up on about... 26 20 or something like that a very strong team and you're gonna see the draco meteor just goes unrespected every time i think in this video only one opponent shielded up the potential draco we landed so many of these nukes on unsuspecting tentacruels venusaurs and what you're seeing here is what could have been a very negative matchup with greedent we're flipping this around and gudra's even getting off a last second aquatel on the greedent today's video is going to be a longer one i've been slagging on videos quite recently and back when i first started this channel i used to do a lot of 30 40 minute videos I decided today, we're going to throw it back a little bit, I used to do these quite a lot. We're going to have a look at the team, how to play out of certain matchups and all that kind of fun stuff. But we're also going to be chilling out, having a bit of a chat about different things in Pokemon Go, and generally just enjoying the gameplay, and talking about whatever comes to mind while watching. So with all that being said, sit back, relax, enjoy, and feel free to drop a like in the video if you do enjoy it. I'm streaming here pretty much every day on YouTube, and I do upload here several times per week, so if you would like to see more of these, feel free to subscribe. As so hopping into this match, I believe we had a very good lead, we had Jellicent, and yeah, the opponent just ends up letting it go. Pretty much not a whole lot they could do there in the first match. And I want to showcase this match right here. So I actually went on a 7 game winning streak. This match is from later on in the sets, but I wanted to showcase it because you're seeing that I actually stay in to throw off an Ice Punch on the Annihilate. Ordinarily, you would think that's a very bad idea. However, if you go straight into Gudra, the opponent will just straight up IPS you. If they're on Ice Punch, which most of them are, they will straight up IPS you. The opponent went for Shadow Ball that time, which does allow me to take Swap. So the reason I want to put this match in here is because it is super important to know that. If you get an Annihilate safe swap against your Sand Slash, do not go straight into Gudra, do not go straight into Polly. Chip it first with Ice Punch. It sucks, you're going to take a lot of damage, but you can put them in a range where you can basically farm them the whole way down with Gudra, and I think it's just much more preferable. If you lose swap, you're kind of screwed in that situation. You want to go straight an Aggro Swap into Lantern, and this match actually turns out to be a loss. I misplayed this quite a lot. Now, they're up 2-1 to one shields. I should be going for Scald here, first of all, and I should recognise at this point that this match is going to come down to fast move pressure. I also need to recognise that maybe even shielding that was not a bad idea, because I can just, you know, it's very obvious they're not going to go for that move. Um, I can just basically fast move pressure them the whole way down. And with that in mind, yeah, I shield a Surf here, which again is double debuffed. I could have maybe made a call, and I end up throwing a charge attack here, which once again, guys, this is a bad move. What the opponent does here is swaps out. I think the opponent gets a little bit greedy here, and they actually end up going for a Surf. The opponent had a Thunderbolt banked. This was definitely greedy. Um, they end up sparking us down, and yeah, unfortunately, we do get a Simul KO. In the end, I misplayed it quite a lot, and I should have just won that match um, after taking Swap. But like I said, I wanted to leave that match in, just in case you guys want to run this team. That's the way to play that match out. If you get a really positive lead, and they swap into an Annihilate, you have to chip it first. Now, this is quite an interesting matchup for Alone and Sand Slash, with my particular IV spread. In the zeros, I simul KO against Clefable. Um, they shield it, so I'll shield back. And if they do shield the first time, go for double Ice Punch afterwards. Um, one drill run will not be quite enough to KO here. And because we've Shadow Clawed them down, we need to go for two Ice Punches. Go for these moves immediately, because it is 665. And as you can see, that leaves them on one HP. Unfortunately, they do just about get the move off. Kind of sucks, right? But um, we get rid of it. We've got Gudra, we've got Polly. We just hope that there's nothing in the back that's really bad for these. Now, in comes Amandabuzz. Ordinarily, this is a very bad matchup for Gudra. We only have Power Whip, we only have Aqua Tail. Mandibuzz is super thick. However, look at Gudra here. Super thick, can easily live two Dark Pulses. I'm going to go straight for the Draco Meteor. See if the opponent wants to respect it. The opponent lets it go. We come into Polly. The opponent comes into Ampharos. And because the opponent's behind an energy, we, we get the Icy Wind off immediately. And what I'm going to look to do here is basically shield whatever move they want to throw. The opponent's going to build up to five. I always shield up the first move usually, just in case it is a zap cannon, but they do go for Thunder Punch. I go for one and throw in the Icy Wind. I think the opponent did have both moves. I guess at that point, the opponent wanted to just farm me the whole way down, um, which I guess is kind of their win con at this point. We've landed the huge Draco Meteor on the Mandibuzz. As you guys seen from the thumbnail, Mandibuzz is not safe against this. Like I said guys, we landed so many Draco Meteors and gained a lot of elo in the process. Definitely a very fun team and um, the opponent ends up quitting the app. They're probably not too happy that they got Draco Meteored, so good games to the opponent there. It's always fun using quite interesting teams that are using unconventional movesets. You can often catch the opponents off guard. In the next one here, the opponent has a Galvantula lead. The opponent can stay in that lead and make it awkward, but I guess they might have two answers to a Slash in the back, so the opponent does swap out. 
In this matchup, what I typically like to do is get off the Icy Wind immediately and then counter it the whole way down. They'll get off three more Body Slams here, which won't KO anymore. And I typically come out of here with enough for like a Scald or an Icy Wind. If the opponent's in Trailblaze, uh, you do have to throw two moves. Or you will have to throw one Scald at the very least. As you can see here, the opponents always do make this last second move, which is kind of annoying. Uh, they go for the Body Slam, and I think, yeah, I decide just to go for the move immediately. The opponent comes into a Jelly, so this is pretty good for me. I've got the uh, Gudra, which can do well against Jelly as well. I decide to bank the move here, and come into the, uh, the Gudra. I decided that move is going basically nowhere, and I'd rather just have an opportunity to just, yeah, let these moves go, and like to sweep with Sand Slash. And um, we're going to look to get off this Draco Meteor. The opponent knows that we're usually run Aqua Tail. Will the opponent respect it? No, they don't. We absolutely nuke that spider. We send that spider into next week. The opponent, after seeing the meteor, is an insta throwing Andy. They're not trying to get their whole team Draco meteored. We come back into Sand Slash, and at this point, it is basically curtains for them. Yeah, we won seven games in a row with this team. Um, let me know what your thoughts are on Ultra Premier. Did you enjoy it this week, or did you stick to Great League? I have tried to play Great League several times this week, and guys, every time I do, I go negative. I always end up going back to Ultra Premier. I am actually quite looking forward to Jungle Cup next week. As I mentioned in a previous video, I tend to do a lot better in limited metas um, that have more than one or three typings. Whenever we have limited metas like this, Great League Remix, I think even things like Holiday Cup I done quite well in last season, or for example, Retro Cup, Evolution Cup, cups that have more than one or three typings I do a lot better in. Um, typically in open leagues, I tend to struggle quite a lot. Um, I just think it's, it's super, super random. And it's very, very easy to get into cycles of games where you just cannot win them. Um, I think with limited metas, you tend to learn what's going on. And you can sort of work out loopholes in the meta. You can actually see here in this match, the opponent respected the Draco. I never go for it straight away, because I don't want to debuff my attack. We drop our attack by two stages by going for that. I know I still live this move. So we're taking swap against this Mandibuzz. We're going to farm this the whole way down. And even get off a dying move on whatever comes back in. So you're seeing here, this is just putting in so much work. They come into Swampert, they aggro swap. I'm more than happy to do this. So what did start off as a Swampert lead is actually becoming very positive for us now. I knew the opponent would probably most likely go for Earthquake, knowing that I can comfortably live the move. I realize though that I'm going to have to eat an Earthquake no matter what here. I might as well shield up the first one, go for a debuff, and basically look to counter this the whole way down. The only other thing that could be really bad for this team is if the opponent had like an Annihilate or something. That's not what I was expecting. I was expecting double flyer. So we'll have a look to see what the opponent comes into. Or in general, two Pokemon that can beat grass types. They come into Gliscor here. Icy Wind is double super effective. The opponent can let this go, but as you can see, it does an absolute ton. We even get off a second move. I was aware that the opponent could go for a catch, but at this point, I don't really care. Um, I can even just come into my Gudra here, force the shield, but we just come into Sand Slash and go for a nasty catch instead. The opponent is in just absolute shambles right here. We catch the Earthquake. Good game is well played to the opponent. The opponent comes into the Mandibuzz. We confirm it the whole way down. Absolutely nasty catch on the Earthquake. And yeah, the win streak continues. So after today's sets, I ended up finishing up well above a veteran, which as you guys seen, I've been struggling to hit it for two weeks. It's kind of funny how you struggle to hit something and then as soon as you hit it, you're able to kind of progress and push on. It's almost as if hitting a veteran was like a mental block for me. And once I was able to achieve that, I was able to push on a little bit extra. You know, we're over 100 ELO above Veteran at this point. And like I said, we're coming into the Jungle Cup next week. I'm, I don't ever do, like, best team videos. But a few Pokemon that I think are quite interesting in the Cup. Of course, we have Steelix Rank 1, Claude Sire, Skarmory. Um, I think Fire Punch Diggersby could be quite interesting tomorrow. And I do think Vigoroth with Brick Break could also be quite interesting. So those might be things that you want to keep in your arsenal. I think, generally speaking, Pokemon the Core Break that me and Meta um, will be good to look at. And, as I mentioned, I think in those cups, it is very, very good. What tends to happen is, uh, especially in Vigoroth metas, you have Vigoroth plus two other Pokemon on every team. So, yeah, you're going to see that quite a lot. Um, there are no counter users in that cup except for Vigoroth and, I believe, Scrafty. So, I also think Scrafty could be quite an interesting pick. It'll do very well into the Steelixes. You're going to see a lot of teams that are triple weak to counter. Just because there aren't that many Pokemon that are super good into them, um, a lot of the counter users share different weaknesses, right? So, for example, you have Steelix, which is weak to counter and weak to, like, water. You have Vigoroth, which is neutral. Um, so I do think Pokemon like Scrafty, Diggersby, which is just super bulky. And, of course, Vigoroth with Brick Break itself could be very, very strong for the meta. Um, I want you guys to let me know your thoughts and opinions if you want to. I'll have a little chat about it here. You don't have to tell me if you don't want to. But uh, what are your thoughts on the current uh, Go Battle League metas? And how do you think these uh, buffs and, you know, move changes have, have kind of shaped up over the last few seasons? Um, it has been quite interesting. I think it is surprising how good Vigoroth is now. Uh, Vigoroth has always been quite a strong Pokemon. If you think back to the last couple of seasons, it got Rock Slide, um, which is just a massive improvement for it. 
Also, last season, <laughs> Brick Break got buffed. Um, and also, potentially, they may buff uh, Bulldoze in the future. Bulldoze is a terrible move. So, it could be the case where Vigrove is just hardcore meta. I think it is kind of... I don't mind Vigrove. I'm, I'm not the number one you know, Vigrove hater here. Um, people are very tired of it and stuff in limited metas. Personally, I don't mind it because I do enjoy the predictability of the Vigrove of metas. I do enjoy um, using Pokemon that require energy management as opposed to alignment. Again, I think that's why I've done super well in the metas that I've done well in last season, which were Great League Remix and the Evolution Cup. Evolution Cup was definitely an energy management meta, and that's definitely what suits me a lot better. So I do personally prefer that, and I do recommend if you're trying to climb, try to play these limited metas and try to get good at them. Um, try to master that because I do think there is skill in open leagues, right? I'm not going to say that there isn't, but I just do think they're so much more RPS than uh, certain cups that you can play. I think even Ultra League is definitely a good thing to build for if you're a little bit reluctant to try it, if you don't want to spend Stardust. You know, take into consideration that some Great League Pokemon are level 50 as well, and you know, even though it may be your favorite league, if you're not having a great time in Great League, it's probably because it is very hard to build teams in that league. You have to try to build teams that make sense, right? Like, you can't be running teams that are double weak to counter, for example. Um, we had a discussion on stream today about ABA teams. Certain ABA teams work. For example, Double Electric, where something like a Charge Bug, if you don't get a debuff against the Whiskash, can take that matchup. Or something like a Lickitung can beat an Annihilate if you land the Power Whip, and if you're correctly shielding the move or whatever, right? Those sort of teams do make sense, but then you, you have a lot of teams that just make absolutely no sense whatsoever. Like ABA weak to Lantern teams, or... Just teams that are just silly, right? And when you're team building in Great League, you always have to take into consideration that some iteration of Wigglytuff, Bastiodon, and Victor Bell exists. That team is the king of RPS. If you, honestly, like most of the time, unless you have a Pokemon that core breaks that line somewhat, like a Gligar, a Sandslash, a Registeel, if you don't have some of those Pokemon that can beat two or more of the Pokemon on that team, and you get a bad lead against that team, you basically lose. Or unless the opponent completely misplays. Um, for example, like I was playing Skarmory, Double Ghost, Sableye, and Giratina. I absolutely should not be beating that team, but in certain cases the opponents have terrible IVs on their Basti and you can beat it with the Skarmory Steel Wing, um, doing neutral damage. You know, maybe you get a massive farm down on the Wigglytuff or catch a move. You know, it is possible to beat those teams, but more often than not, if the opponent has any brain cells, they can just beat you if they RPS you. So yeah, I think that's something to keep into consideration um, when you're trying to climb and go Battle League. Don't heavily rely on Great League. For me, I always think of it like this. I've always loved Great League. It's always been my favourite league to play. But I think it's getting to the point now where it is just so RPS with how the move updates have shaped out. That if you're not a like, really, really above average skill player, you're going to struggle to climb in it. You know, I'm sure you guys have heard whenever you're trying to learn how to get better at the game, you have to, you know, focus on your move timing. By the way, we land the Draco meet here on the Dragalgy. I thought I'd just point that one out. Yeah, definitely, like, learning move timing is huge if you're looking to try and it's just even a veteran or expert for the first time. Um, learning how to read teams, trying to understand what your win conditions are in certain matchups, trying to understand, like, when it's a good time for you to call a bait, or it's a good time for you to go for a bait. Trying to sort of uh, think of your win cons and think of what the opponent might have in the back, based on the Pokemon that you see in the lead, and other things like that. All of those things are what will help you win. Now, look at this, right? Earthquake me daddy. Earthquake me daddy. I have no need to shield this. Oh no, the Glisker's loaded in energy, they're gonna Earthquake me, I don't care. Like, if I shield here, I'm potentially giving myself a loose con, because back in comes for Alligator, and they just top left, because I made the correct play by not shielding. Like, had I shielded that, maybe they get off Hydro Cannons, maybe they somehow make a last second move, um, you know, maybe they snipe me with the Hydro and get rid of my Sand Slash, you know, a lot of- I was probably winning anyway, even if I shielded, but I think definitely recognising your path to victory is the key here. But yeah, sort of going back to what I was talking about, with that particular, like, RPS team, if you're constantly facing that, even the best of players, I'm not the best of players, I'm definitely well above average, but like that even gets me in a negative loop um, where you get very, very tilted at the game and start playing badly. So yeah, in my personal opinion, I think you should take every opportunity you can to play a limited metas or ultra league if you're looking to climb and go battle league. Now right here, this is a super unfortunate situation. Um, right here, I think my win con is to call a bait. The win goes straight for the moon blast, <laughs> so it's like, okay, I don't uh, play out my win condition here. Right here, my win conditions to call the bait. They actually do go for it, so the opponent's playing out their lose con. In those situations as the opponent, you just have to full send, um, because this is such a dominant position for them. Now my win con is to shield up a potential moon blast and look to try and counter this the whole way down. Even if they reach the moon blast, this is my win con, I have to play to it. We do manage to get it. And now we have half a chance. Unfortunately though, the opponent does come into a Venusaur. If this was a shadow, 
I, like I, I maybe still don't win this, but I, I do uh, two shot it here, and the Alolan Sand Slash will take a lot of counter damage, so it definitely will be a lot closer. So yeah, even in these situations, you have to try to play out your win con, even if it's completely just not there, right? You have to try to play to it, because there's always a, a chance the opponent will make mistakes. Also in this situation right here, I'm full sending the drill run, you could say this is such an easy bait spot, but a lot of times the opponents just let it go and play out, you know, like, a one shield scenario, because they know they can live the move. You know, so also learning, like, which moves can you live, and what is a good bait, depending on your opponent's ability to recognize how much damage things do. Whenever you start getting above, let's say, a veteran at this point in the season, opponents will typically know, like, how much damage things do, and they're not going to necessarily just, you know, shield up anything. So yeah, these are all the things you have to sort of realize and learn just from experience. But what the opponent is about to learn from experience is that Draco Meteor is going to absolutely one-shot the Trevenant. And back in comes the Polyrath. Good game is well played to the opponent here. Well, yeah, no, it's pretty much over. We can basically let the Gudra go. The opponent shits their pants here. <laughs> I do like saying things like that. By the way, if you guys are my opponents um, and I'm telling you that you're shitting your pants, I'm sorry. But we're just saying it for entertainment purposes here. I did a little bit of a poll recently on my channel. Um... Asking if you guys, you know, don't mind swearing in videos, or if you prefer it, or if you prefer not to. The reason I was thinking about that quite recently was, I was watching Callum on Toast and Jimmy Finn's crossover for April Fools. Jimmy went onto Callum's channel, Callum went onto Jimmy's, and Jimmy was like, hello, Callum on Toast here. And I looked at the comment section, and one of the comments was, I I'm so glad that you kept it clean and kept it to Callum's kind of commentary style because you know Jimmy like myself swears in videos maybe has a little bit darker humor which I know like I really enjoy personally but I know like if I was sitting with my kids watching the video I don't necessarily think I would want them to hear some of the stuff that even I would say in my own videos um so that's something that I do sort of keep in mind so yeah uh do let me know your thoughts on that but we land the Draco Meteor on the Venusaur um unfortunately they do live it so if you wanted to you could over farm a little bit more and just get them into the Draco Meteor range the opponent's not really pressured to throw there straight away we come into the Polyrath here, banking a little bit of extra energy, um, we're going to just basically counter this the whole way down. With the Venusaur out of the way, you would think Poly's basically home free here. We'll counter down this for Alligator, and the opponent comes into their own Poly. Now the opponent actually swapped out, so they can clear their debuff at some point, but I pretty much just want to debuff them. Um, I'm a hidden energy, and they have to over farm as much as possible, so I can get for as much damage as I can possibly get here, um, just so that basically Sand Slash can deal with it. I have almost two moves on Gudra. The opponent is forced to throw here eventually. I think they might have been able to commit to the counter down. Um, but yeah, we've got two moves on Gudra. I realize the opponent had energy. I go for a CMP. The opponent over farms. They shield up the Aqua Tail. I go for the Wombo Combo. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of energy on this as well. I'm expecting the opponents to go for, yeah, a swap out to clear their debuff. But at this point, they're super low. And we over farm enough to the uh, Drill Run, which will be enough to take out the Poly. One's called, not going to be enough here. And that's good games. So anyway, to tie up that topic from before, um, I think with Great League, I, I do think they should try to sort of change a few things. Um, I think with Scald, it probably should be a little bit less than 50%. I think 30% would be a little bit better. Um, I think the issue in Great League at the moment is that Grass types are a little bit out of the meta. I think at one point the meta was in a decent spot whenever we had Superior. Um, I feel like that was a pretty decent time in the meta. At that time, Metacham was still very powerful. Noctal had already been nerfed. I think that was a good move. I think nerfing Psychic at the time they nerfed it was probably a little bit unnecessary because we had Annihilate which came in which of course became the sort of king of fighters. I think the Great League actually benefits from having a very very powerful Pokemon which has a lot of play into almost anything which was basically Metacham right? Even against Azu, landing two Psychics could allow you to win that match. Um, even against Charmers you can go for a heavy hitting Psychic and you can survive for long enough to get off multiple moves. As crazy as it might sound, I think having one overpowered Pokemon that, as I mentioned with Vigro growth metas, is very predictable. I think that's very, very beneficial for the meta. We do have a lot of inherently RPS Pokemon that are quite strong in the meta. Skarmory, very, very RPS. It just loses to Lantern instantly. Lantern with the uh, spark damage is very strong and even very neutral into like grass types. I think Whiskash with the 50% chance. If you guys don't know this, it does as much as a Hydro Cannon, but it has 50% chance of debuffing. I think the damage is fine. I'm all for the damage. I, I do think the debuff needs to kind of go. And speaking of debuffs, can we get the texts correct in this game? Where it actually shows you if you got a debuff or not. You know, meta aside, can we get the game working correctly? Um, with all of the like lags and turn swaps and everything. I do think that should be Niantic's uh, number one priority over move changes. I do think move changes are the more simple things that they can do to improve metas and make the game more fresh because they simply add the move to the move pool and make sure it has animations and it's basically fine. It's not the most difficult thing they can do. But what I'm actually hoping for in the Great League is that Edgy Slash is a game changer 
That Pokemon is super bulky, and if they give that Pokemon a somewhat sort of decent moveset, it's going to be just absolutely everywhere, and it's going to be a Pokemon that is going to be a focal point of the meta. I really hope whenever Edgy Slash comes out, it's actually quite decent, and the teams are more focused around beating that Pokemon, as opposed to uh, just sort of ABB like Fire Double Grass, or Basti Vic Wiggly and hope for the best, or ABI Weak to Lantern, but who cares, we just stay in with the, the Talonflame in the lead. I do think having neutral Pokemon in metas is very healthy, and hopefully Edgy Slash is quite neutral, it has a lot of bulk of course, and it makes people think about what they're running a little bit more. In my personal opinion, the skill level in Great League has severely decreased in the last few seasons. I don't know exactly what the answer is, but I do think the answer is that something needs to be done that makes the meta less RPS and makes it a little bit more a little bit more punishing to run stupid teams constantly. So yeah, I run this opponent, I run against this opponent the other day. This is Luxray Double Charm. The opponents actually beat me last time. Um what they done is they called my baits. So they called the ice punches, right? So this time we went drill run on the uh, Sylveon, and this time I managed to um, get the shields off the opponent here, and like to basically sweep it with Polly. So I played this one pretty well. The opponent here, yeah, they're not going to get to a move in time. So yeah, good games. <laughs> it's sort of funny, like, Luxray Double Charm, what the hell is that team? I'm not sure if it makes any sense or not, I haven't really thought too much about it, but I'm going to lean on, this is just a toxic team, and somehow they're doing well with it. I respect Luxray, it's a pretty interesting pick, but Gramble and Sylveon, <laughs> it's a funny one. Whenever I seen that at the start, I'm like, oh, what an absolute, what an absolute spice load. I thought it like, what a nice team, and then I seen the double charm, it's, yeah, I, I immediately lost all respect for it, but in the next battle here, guys, we're hopping back into the battles, we've got Galarian Stunfisk, okay. So, Stunfisk is quite interesting for Slash. I believe they win the twos if they successfully beat you, which they full sent the first time, they successfully baited me the second time, and at this point, I'm just like, yeah, I'm getting out of here. They obviously have something weak in the back. Whatever the answer is to Polly, we need to see what it is. If it's a Charmer in the zeros, we definitely reach a Scald and get them super low and deal with it with Sand Slash. It just so happened to be Jelly, and I believe we do get the attack drop. As you guys are about to see, like, Polly is ridiculous in this cup. I love Polyrath, because again, it's like a neutral Pokemon. Um, we do go for this move on 7. This will get them super low, actually, and we'll get another debuff, so... At this point, the opponent is still forced to go for two Shadow Balls, which is kind of insane. Uh, well, actually, Shadow Ball and Surf will get it done. But we can go for this move right here. We go for it on the CMP tie, which is perfect. The opponent doesn't even come out of here with energy against the Polly, which is kind of ridiculous. We did have an energy lead, but it is kind of crazy how much work Polly does here. We come in with Sand Slash. Oh no, I come in with Gudra because I know they've got an Earthquake banked. So again, being able to predict what your opponent's going to do, that was super vital for me here. We farm it the whole way down with Gudra, and the opponent comes into Amanda Buzz. Mandibuzz. If you've not heard about Gudra with Draco Meteor, you're about to learn something today. The opponent goes for the Pulsy Waltzy here, we can tank it like an absolute champ. We do two Dragon Breaths into their free turn move, for good timing, and Draco Meteor coming through, absolutely annihilates the uh, Mandibuzz. The opponent can get off a Dark Pulse, we comfortably live this move, and what we're going to have to do here is go for a 1-and-throw. The opponent paused to turn, I noticed that the opponent paused. One of the benefits, oh I want to talk about this, and I think this is a very underrated, under-talked about thing. Play with sound on, guys. Play with sound on. I did not hear that move come through. If you're struggling to count, guys, trust me, play with sound. It, it, I cannot count in this game without sound. Trust me, I cannot. I'm actually surprised less people do play with sound. It is so helpful. Because even if the game's laggy, you can hear the sounds come through. Now, right here, you put on counter swaps. They give me a huge energy lead and the counter swap the Mandy. Oh, it's just an Aqua Tail. Okay. Draco Meteor time. Unfortunately, like an absolute potato, I throw an alignment. That Draco Meteor lands. And at this point, the opponents swap to back-to-back -back moves. I would love to try and fight for swap, but I decide, like, I'm not really willing to give up both shields. I was considering if the opponent would insta-throw, I was thinking about throwing in Polly. I decided safer to throw in Sand Slash here. If I wanted to, I could aggro swap into this, like, come in with Polly, start countering it down. But I decided, yeah, we'll just get rid of us here. We'll throw in four for good timing. I think I lagged a turn, and it ended up being a CMP tie. That's perfectly fine. The opponent comes in with Gradient, and they come in with Skunk Tank in the back. Okay, so this is very, very doable. I'm going to look to go for these debuffs, of course. I'm hoping the opponent is not in Trailblaze, because this could be a little bit awkward. I'm going to respect this move, and yes, the opponent is on Trailblaze. So I, of course, want to try and debuff the opponent as much as possible. This is a very neutral matchup for Polly. This is a Poison Dark Pokemon, and it is quite glassy, even though it's an Unshadow. These counters are ripping at a new asshole here. Now, while streaming, I wasn't sure of the counts. I was afraid it might be 776. It's actually 877. So by the time the opponent lets his icy wind go through, the opponent was on 20, which if it was 776 would be enough for free trailblazes. I was kind of scared. I thought I might lose this match here. The opponent gets off a body slam, so I'm thinking this must be double trailblaze. 
Um, I maybe could go for double ice punch here, but I didn't think it'd be quite enough. Yeah, by the looks of things, it would not be quite enough. Um, one ice punch is probably all I can get off here. I'm gonna get it off as soon as possible. I think the opponent will probably live on 1 HP and get off the body slam, and we'll see if the opponent has the move or not. But this actually does KO. I definitely made the right choice going for one of each move, and yeah, good games well played. So we started off with a 5-0, and we get another 4-1. And I believe at the end, I think this was actually... Uh, so that match I showed you where I drew. This was that set. I had four wins and a draw. Once again, another Clefable, and we come into the uh, Polyrath. Looking pretty good and pretty RPS. Um, this is actually a lot better for me. The opponent's in Trailblaze, which makes it very, very awkward for me, though. Um, so I do try to go for a CMP on the Scald. Whenever you're looking to get rid of the opponent, you do go for a Scald. Because it allows you to basically get rid of them, right? The opponent will go for uh, another drill blaze. We're going to look to try and counter this the whole way down. They do reach a last second move, which is super annoying. I could have just threw the Icy Wind. But I should get heavy damage or shield off the Cofable. We're going to get off this next Scald. This will do, like I said, a decent amount of damage. I'll put it into close to drill run range. The opponent will farm me the whole way down, which is kind of unfortunate. And I can't really go down two shields. I'm going to be forced to eat a Meteor Mash. Kind of unfortunate. I'm going to farm up as much as I can here before they get to the next move. And look to fire this off. I'm really hoping this KOs. I don't want to eat another Meteor Mash. It doesn't quite KO. We farm it the whole way down though, which is perfect. And in comes the opponent's opposing Sand Slash. I try to play to a CMP time. My Sand Slash with 5 attack usually wins. We do get the shield off the opponent. And what I do here is, you know, this is very, very tricky for me to win. The opponent goes for an Ice Punch Bait. I was very, very tempted to call it. I go for a CMP tie on the drill run. Now... In hindsight, what I could have tried to do is go for another bait here, but I just decided trying to CMP the opponent might be the best play, because what I can potentially do is force the opponent to dump all of their energy and try to get off an Aqua Tail off Goodrum. So right here, it's absolutely imperative that I throw in good timing. I do one and throw for good timing, which is great. Um, this Aqua Tail, it's going to chunk, and it's going to put them very, very close to farm down range. Guys, this is super close. Can my Sand Slash hang on just long enough to uh, Shadow Claw this the whole way down? I'm actually in less health. But I think I must be getting a Shadow Claw Breakpoint or something, because I do manage to uh, take them out with a Simul KO. So that's perfect. In the next game, we have um, a Skarmory lead. Very interesting in the Ultra League. 23.55 CP. I go for a CMP tie here. Now with Skarmory, a lot of times I do often like to go for Brave Bird and, Brave Bird and Dip. It will do about 30-40%. I would say about 40%. I'm going to respect it. And they come into for Alligator. We instantly come into Poly. If you're using this team and the opponent counter swaps a for alligator you have to go immediately because as you're about to see here the way i play this the opponent will be able to reach free hydro cannons go for a scald in this situation do not go for the icy wind the reason being is why am i debuffing the opponent what is the reason because i want the the uh hydro cannons to do less damage well i over farmed like an idiot anyway so it doesn't matter but here's the thing i don't live in another one so what's the point go for the scald doesn't make a difference right get the extra damage through that means they don't reach the third hydro so you swap out immediately and you go for that move so right here, I try to CMP the opponent on the Scald, instead of throwing immediately. If they were to dump their energy here, that'd be perfect. They do not, unfortunately. But they do shield, and they do get the attack drop. So we come in with Sand Slash. We can definitely tank this move. As you can see, like that does half of my remaining health. And the opponent comes into a Mandibuzz. The opponent's running Ebi A. Okay, very, very interesting here. I think what I'm going to look to do is go for an Ice Punch. This will chip them, and hopefully that just means that I can... Uh, pretty much go in, go for a Draco Meteor, and pretty much win the match. I can comfortably tank two. I do make another slight misplay here. I want you guys to watch this. They get to the Dark Pulse. Um, the opponent will get to a second one here, right? So they're basically dry at this point. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe the Switch Clock will be up here quite soon. So I was uh, predicting the catch. I should have overfarmed a little bit, uh, a little bit more here because I am basically 12 turns away from the move, which is super close to how far away the opponent is to the move. I really, I really made that way too close. I needed to do a few extra Dragon Breaths to make sure I can outpace this properly. For some reason, I thought they were on like 1 HP. Good games there. And the opponent comes into a Galavantula in the next one. You pretty much beat this every time. The opponent 2 shields this no matter what. Ice Punch just gets them into like almost a farm down range. So they just shield no matter what. You always beat the Galavantula. Um, if they let it go, like you just come into Gudra and farm it down, that's fine. Once again, I decided to go for the big move this time because I didn't think the opponent would want to necessarily give up both shields, right? If you catch it on the lead, you can probably double bait it, right? But if they're safe swapping this, uh, it just didn't seem like a good a good spot to go for the bait that time. Unfortunately, though, we're feeding the Gudra to the, the Fairforn. The opponent's typically no Flash Cannon Ultra League. Um, it tends to be the preferred move set over Thunder. Flash Cannon hurts a lot. I'm going to go for the Aqua Tail first. This will chip them. I don't want to debuff myself just yet. And the opponent will probably try to go for like just a ton of extra farm. 
We're going to go for Resisted Draco Meteor. Is this an Overheat clone? What is this move? I believe it must be an Overheat clone or like a Brave Bird clone or something. It does an absolute ton of resisted damage. Now, what I decide here is they might have a Polyrath in the back. So I come in with my own Poly. The opponent uh, goes for one and froze on the Power Whip. So I don't have to eat the Flash Cannon on Sand Slash at this point. And in comes Dragalgy. It's a very nice play there. We're going to go for an Ice Punch right away here. And we're going to basically try to land another move. The opponent does not quite get to it. We get off another Ice Punch, which is perfect. I think even had the opponent farm me down completely, I think Polly can still take this because, yeah, they can beat me here, but I live in Outrage. Like, if I get farmed down, I was no shielding this for sure. I even was about to no shield that just for the fun of it. Um, we definitely comfortably live that move, so it was never really in doubt there. A very interesting matchup between Sand Slush and Lantern. In the two shield scenario, Lantern, I think, actually wins this match because they can survive a drill run long enough to get off their Thunderbolt at the end. So while this is like quite positive in general, if they play at the twos, this can be a little bit tricky. We're going to go for these moves, try to CMP the opponents. They normally just go for Surfs here, which is perfectly fine. We'll shield up whatever they want to throw. Um, whenever they're staying in, it's pretty clear that they're weak to it in the back. I try to play to a Surf CMP. Um, I don't think a Surf quite KOs me from here. The opponent has to commit to the Thunderbolt. We farm it the whole way down, so that's perfect. And they come into an Alolan Ninetales. So this is kind of rough. The opponent does have an answer to Dragons on the team. But they've had two answers to Polly so far. Could they possibly have three answers to Polly on this team? Is this the I Hate Polyraph team? Do they just have three answers to it? Do they have an Annihilate or something? Like, what do they have in the back? I'm hoping at this point, we can basically come in with Sand Slash, tank the energy. I'm not expecting them to be triple weak to Sand Slash. So I'm pretty much happy to sacrifice this here at this point. The opponent actually goes for a Psy Shock, which is the correct move. Um, the Butterball is double resisted. So you do go for Psy Shock in this situation. We get rid of it and we uh, just hard swap. Yep, in comes Dragalgy. And in the Zero Shield scenario, um, with one Icy Wind debuff, we just comfortably live the Outrage. You're about to see here, this is not a drama at all. The opponent's gonna build up to it. We should live this even in the yellow, I think, or just like, barely in the red. Yeah, just barely in the red. We're at about 25% health, and yeah, we get off the second Icy Wind. Good games there. I think with Lantern, it is good to remember that in that scenario, they can win the twos. But yeah, we're almost getting to the end of the video. If you've made it 30 minutes in, very much appreciate it. Thank you guys for watching. I very much appreciate the support on these videos and streams. For those of you who don't know, I live in Japan, I'm an English teacher here, and I do YouTube sort of for the day, and I teach in the evening, um, so you guys showing support in the videos, it's sort of like a part-time job for me, but I probably spend more time doing this than my actual job, and of course I have my family and stuff to take care of as well. So all the support in the videos, it really does mean a lot, and big thank you to everybody. We'll check out this one more match here, this is quite an interesting team the opponent has got. Um, I decided to allow the opponent to get off an extra body slam here, because I don't want them, them to get an extra bit of arm. I don't want them to get an extra bit of farm. So we get this off. Arguably, I should let the opponent take me down. Because that way. And I probably should go for a debuff as well. <laughs> Arguably, I should let them do that. Because they could lock this into like a poly or something at this point. So I go for an over farm. Go for the uh, drill run. I'm going to go for this next move immediately. Thinking the opponent will go for CMP. The opponent smartly goes for an extra one. So even though like the opponent had a very negative situation here. They're making this awkward as possible. Um, if I know she'll a shadow ball, they're gonna get me super low. And yeah, this is getting a little bit tricky at this point. We do make a CMP tie here on the final surf. So that definitely is a good thing. We sort of have to hope that Gudra can cook whatever's in the back, but it is a Steelix. Now I decide to make a call here. If it's breaking swipe, I lose. So I'll no shield the first Psychic Fangs, which is good. Again, I'm playing to my win condition. If I shield the Psychic Fangs, I probably lose here. The opponent goes for that move. And I think they're gonna try and commit to the farm down here. Perfect, we do get off a second move. Now, I think what I need to try and do is come in with the poly, go for two counters if I can make it to two. I get one counter for it. I believe the opponent is on like five or six dragon tails here, and we do I manage to shadow quad the whole way down. The gradient almost gets to remove. This thing is insanely good, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video, man. If you did, go on ahead and drop a like. It's much appreciated. Subscribe if you're not yet subscribed to the channel. We're pushing towards 5k here. We've hit 4k quite recently. I've been doing this for just over a year now, and yeah, this support's incredible, guys. Big thank you. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your time. I'll be streaming tomorrow for Jungle Cup, and I'll be uploading any good teams I find, so stay tuned. If you do want to be notified for the videos, you can turn on notifications, and I also ping the Discord every time I go live or make a video, so feel free to join up as well. Thank you, guys. Have a good rest of your day. Very much appreciate you guys watching to the end, and uh, have a fantastic rest of your day.